And of course, uh, there is this uh, third element, what is the ethical presupposition of non-counting? And I will not repeat it, Professor Hoppe has shown us again, that is, it, it is basically the norms of libertarian ethics, self-ownership and homesteading. It would be interesting here, again, as a challenge, uh, to point out that perhaps the most that there are very few people who have seriously challenged this argument, but where they have challenged it, and I think Stefan Kinsella has entered into the dis discussions with the challengers, they have usually challenged whether it is or not possible to make arguments without getting into self-contradiction uh, by uh, getting rid of the universe Personalizability principle. And I would ask this question to, to, to Professor Hoppe now. For instance, if, if you have Rousseau on his island alone, alone is, is it possible for him to have, so to speak, autistic argumentation? So he argues, but only with himself. So his universe of argumentation is a one man universe, autistic argumentation. Now, Friday comes along but he is more interested in doing some experiments, uh, treating him like, like another computer. He already has a computer, but he will need a better computer. He will never presuppose that he is an independent, argumentative agent. He will just maybe talk to him like he talks to his uh, artificial intelligence computer. But he will always, always evaluate what he hears himself. So he, he is still uh, 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 an autistic uh, argument taker. And I don't know if, if this would work, uh, then of course the next step would be to restrict, for instance, to my tribe. I, I, I restrict the, the, the set of argument taters to my tribe. Uh, can I do this without getting into, into, into self-contradiction? Now, I, I looked up what, what Stefan Kinsel said. Some of the remarks he makes, and from this I will close this, uh, this question. Is, if you propose any non-libertarian norm, that norm must be not universalizable and or fail to set forth a property allocation system that makes conflict avoidance possible. And this is true so. If you want to propose a non-libertarian norm, you must either, either make it non-universalizable, but again, the question is, can I argue consistently without universalizing across all the human rational beings? For instance, just autistic argumentation. For instance, I believe I'm the Führer of the universe. In a sense, yes, the answer can be then you pose only a technical problem. And this is true. But am I engaged in self-contradiction? This is the question. And uh, of course, uh, or by uh, not making uh, conflict avoidance possible. And his other interesting observation, rejecting universalizability means that any norm whatsoever can be proposed by simply making up a particularistic reason for it. So this is true, this is true. I can basically exclude whomever I want. At the, at the extreme, I can include only myself if I uh, want to conceive of myself as the Führer of the universe. You know? But uh, this is, and I ask this because it is very uh, pressing question. We have these neoconservatives now, who basically say you can torture or the fear of the universe can torture, he can kill, uh, he can uh, get rid of uh, universal, universal and other. Uh, the, other uh, the other point uh, about universalizability, um, now, first point I would make is this idea of speaking a private language uh, cannot be maintained. I believe that if you look at the philosophical investigations of Wittgenstein, who shows, I think, quite conclusively that 
every language is, so to speak, a public, a public language. We cannot even conceive of using a language that only we ourselves understand and no one else could possibly understand because this person could not even know if he uses his own terms in the same way in the second instance and so forth. We need, so to speak, control of the use of our language by physical interaction. So Wittgenstein has this uh, picture of uh, what's, what does he call it? Sprachspiele or language, language games. So you learn, you learn a language by engaging in activities and uh, the activities and the language correct each other, so to speak. Then we finally know our kid, now a kid understands what the term fork means or what the term uh, knife means. Uh, so without tying our words back to some physical, visible things, there's no way that we could actually just communicate with each other. So anybody who does argue does address, so to speak, the entire world capable of engaging in these types of language games. So the universalizability criterion is already implied in the idea of arguing at all. Um, we were also, when it comes to truth, you know, it's like, okay, this, this is a book, this is this, um, uh, a statement that claims, that claims to be true. We would also not say, this is just something that is true for me alone or just at this moment. Uh, it is a statement that says, I think every reasonable person can in principle recognize that this is in fact a book and it is not just a book right now. It remains a book also uh, tomorrow and uh, one week, one week from, uh, one week from now.